incorporates coruscating Claris Claris mania from the prodigal player theatre with none other than that vertiginous, vital spark, Miss Jan Hunt.
Mr. Bernard Herman and his frenetic affiliates for the fabulous filigree of Fouette, the ecstasy of Entrechat, from Prima Ballerina Assolutissima, Chantal with Dumont!
ineluctable deliquescences of Franz Leha made luminous by the ineffable effulgence of Miss Lynn Kennington! <laughs>
propensities precipitate a hair-raising heterogeneity that, madam, is a mixed bag. If you'll pardon the expression. Of propulsive, revolutionary projectiles. Juggling. Ladies and gentlemen, Panto!
Right. <clears throat> First of all, ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen, any jitty kids, dogs, kids, cats and lodgers, I'd like to say, how tickled I am, Mrs. How full of plumptiousness, love. <laughs> how absolutely discomnockerated. <laughs> Standing here tonight, I feel absolutely ghoulified. It, it's, it's the... It's the same as being contrapuntal. <laughs> I, how full of lung punky notchiness, ladies and gentlemen, standing here tonight in this magnificent shed. <laughs> standing here tonight on Ticklemas Eve, here in my hurry furry coat. Like a gaffer, hurry furry. <coughs> Genuine moggy skin, this. It is, moggy skin, pussycats. It took 28 moggies to make this. <laughs> All toms. <laughs> By Jove, it's full of life, this coat. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a pair of underpants made of the same stuff. <laughs> Moggy skin, long johns. When I walk down our street, people say, ah, oh, hairy comms. <laughs> hairy comms. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> it's a joke. A lot of, it's what we call in show business a shaft of wit. Now, a lot of people <laughs> often wonder where... <laughs> Where all these short shafts of wit are coming from? Well, <laughs> it's a firm here in Yorkshire, in Cleckuddersdwyck, called Jorks Limited, and we send the postal order off on a Monday, and they send us the Jorks through by the weekend. <laughs> well, I wonder where my butler's got to my valet. Knockers! No, no, not you, Missy. Knockers! <laughs> this, is, this is my butler, Knockers, lady. How are you, Knockers? All right. Ah, Joe, you're looking well. You've been breathing again, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> knockers, I want you to... Uh, Take him for a run around the block, will you? Hasn't been today. No, <laughs> Knockers. And don't forget the ball and bat. There you are. Good. Thank you very much, Knockers. Why is your good ladder? I'd like to say, once again, I'd like to say, ladies and gentlemen, how oh, tickled I am. True. <laughs> Did you see that, love? They can't touch you, boy, you know. <laughs> they can't. Not if you've been sponsored. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Rubbish, get off. Hi. <laughs> sort of mean, ladies There we are. Now then, this is the. <laughs> right. <sighs> This is a tickle on the first two rounds. <laughs> Geronimo! <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I can't tell you how absolutely, how absolutely underwhelmed I feel being <laughs> here this evening. All these hairy. <coughs> I, oh, there's a fine walrus handlebar moustache. <coughs> how long did it take you to grow that, Mrs? <laughs> <laughs> Young lady leaning in the low-cut dress, leaning out of the box up there. Very nice, love. <laughs> can you see everything? <laughs> <laughs> we can. <laughs> <laughs> to be here tonight, let him here at the city of this this beautiful Edwardian Nissen hut. This <laughs> one of the seven wonders of Brigitte. This. <laughs> Now, this lovely theatre, ladies and gentlemen, actually, there's a story attached to this theatre, you know. It's on the wall in the gents. And <laughs> it's, 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 the style of, uh, of architecture here is early perpendicular, and the decorations are Baroque or Baroque. Baroque. It's all Baroque. The <laughs> windows are broke, the doors are broke. <laughs> the manager, he's not too flush either. <laughs> This beautiful place, like the, the ceiling here, the ceiling is an exact replica of the Sistine Chapel done in whitewash. And <laughs> notice, notice how the floor is so cunningly made so it just reaches your feet. This is <laughs> a feature, isn't it? On your way in, you probably noticed the filigree foyer and the half-timbered gents. And this is <laughs> all a feature of this magnificent building, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, as I say, it is uh, really wonderful. Tonight is anniversary night. It's exactly 25 years ago to the very night since the circle collapsed. <laughs> and, uh, yes. <laughs> Laugh. 25. <laughs> 25 years ago, there were people sitting up there, just like you are now. <laughs> rows and rows of Toby Jugs. Oh. <laughs> Hey, mother, have you got any more of that nut brittle? <laughs> All of a sudden, there was this horrible creaking noise. There it goes again. <laughs> Kavoom! The whole lot fell down, collapsed. There was, there was a little old lady sitting in the middle, underneath. Just where you are, dear. There was a dear little old lady sitting in that seat in the centre there, underneath, with her lolly eyes sticking up in the air. 
This man, this fella, upstairs. In a kilt. She says, by Jove, you get a big in for six. <laughs> <laughs> they laugh at us down south, you know. They say we wear flat hats. Of course we wear flat hats. You know why? Because we wear flat heads. <laughs> Those fellas, the men down south, shall I tell you, the men down south, they wear their socks in bed. That's not fair to any woman. She'd wear clogs like we do. <laughs> now, my granddad, there was a fella. My granddad, all his life, he worked like a horse. People used to follow him with a shovel. <laughs> 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 Well, my little Uncle Willie, he works on the docks in Liverpool and he, he's what they call a diesel fitter. He goes around the dock shed looking in all the cases saying, now, diesel fitter, diesel fitter. <laughs> my granddad, he was in this business. My granddad was on the stage. My granddad was one of the old-time greats. My granny used to have to blacklead him. <laughs> <laughs> so very, very jealous of him. When he goes out for a shovel of coal, she has him followed. And <laughs> put a padlock on his braces. <clears throat> She frightened the life out of me the other night. She, my granny, she told my granddad she was saving up for a new perm. He thought she said a new pram. Because <laughs> he hasn't been well, my granddad. No. All through the winter, my granddad stood with his back to the fire. We had to have him swept. <laughs> this was a... <laughs> <coughs> now. And now, if you please, the latest news out, no, the latest news now is that ladies actually want the vote. <laughs> You can't do that. We can't let them have that, can we, lads? No! Yes. Because we're British, aren't we, lads? Yes! And we'll all put our backs out for Britain, won't we, lads? Yes! Well, you will. I'm going to have a lie down. I can't. <laughs> no, you must admit, ladies, British men. British men are the world's greatest, aren't we, girls? Yes. You. You wouldn't fancy one of those continental Romeos, would you, ladies? Yes! What? One of these frisky Frenchmen? Yes! You, you wouldn't, missus, because all they think about is... <laughs> You, you wouldn't fancy one of those, you wouldn't fancy one of those handsome Italians with the black wavy hair, would you, girls? Yeah. Why don't you that? You wouldn't. You, they creep up behind you when you're doing the sprouts. And... <laughs> Wait. So, we want to do something really dramatic, Mr. Saxer, and I think it's time has come for us to have a bad salad. A sad ballad? Yes. Yes, could we have something, something Mr. Mr. Herman, have you something like, uh, don't go down in the mine, Dad, there's plenty of slack in your trousers. <laughs> have, well, I don't know. <laughs> Something. What's something that really... We want, we want to sing something that will really please the ladies and gentlemen, like a romantic song, like it's only the hers on a goose dog that's probably becoming a grip. What, uh, fellow looking at me through binoculars here, I'm going to sing my race horse. Uh, <laughs> what? For this, for this romantic high Stedford, what sort of music do you recommend, sir? Musical comedy. Musical comedy. Beautifully judged. I've, uh, <coughs> beautifully judged. I had three ambitions in my life. My first was to sing under your baton. Wave it. That's it. That's, that's his bat on. If they play a wrong note, you bat him on the head with it. And my second ambition was to do a duet with a beautiful girl in A-flat. And my third ambition... <laughs> musical comedy, beautifully. Any, any particular, any particular musical comedy? You know, the Maid of the, the Maid of the Mountains. The Maid of the <coughs> Oh, come tell me, pretty maiden. Are there any more at home like you? There are a few. I don't. <laughs> the prince one night shoots in for a quick sherbet, and there she is, this vision of loveliness, standing on the bar counter on one leg, selling crisps and drying out the pint glasses with the end of her pigtail. It's love at first fright. Like all sweethearts in love, their eyes meet, their eyes meet, and suddenly he feels something stir in his breast, and he realises his ferrets got loose. <laughs> so, yes, what a beautiful girl, but so thin, thin. One day she swallows a pickle onion, and four lads leave the village. And, <laughs> yes, now, her mother... Her mother's just the opposite. Her mother's a big, plump, jolly lady. She used to go away to sea. She used to be a decoy for a whaling fleet. And the prince is determined to serenade his gypsy sweetheart, because she looks very gypsyish. She has pierced ears. She'd walked in front of a dartboard one day, wasn't the boy. <laughs> He'd met her in the street one day. She was selling things door to door in Harrogate. And <coughs> they... <laughs> no chance. So he... 
He says to her, he said, what have you got under your arm? She said, lavender. He said, oh, how unusual. <laughs> well, he... <laughs> he goes down her street at midnight singing his head off and people fling open their bedroom windows and throw things down to him. So he goes home and gets changed, comes back <laughs> singing the student prince's legal aid. <clears throat> Saturday. Saturday. <clears throat> Overhead, the moon is beaming. Oh, overhead, the, the moon. Oh, uh, could I have the note, please, sir? Oh, oh well. Uh, <laughs> what did you do to him, then? <laughs> Mr. Drummer, could I have the note, please? Oh, but the moon is beaming White as blossoms on the bow Nothing is heard but the sound of the bird <laughs> Here is a message, here is a message for the treasurer of the Works Christmas Club. One fine day we'll find you. <laughs> That's it? Something sort of romantic, eh? Romantic. Spanish eyes. Spanish. Spanish eyes. Spanish eyes. Who the hell are you pushing? <laughs> oh. Spanish eyes. Loveliest eyes in all of Mexico. No, that's not good. No. Um, something more traditional. Have, have you were uh, <coughs> The Last of the Delicate Her by Dan Druff? <coughs> Young Molly, who lived at the foot of a hill, whose fame every virgin with envy done. Feel of beauty is blessed with so ample a share. Men call her the lass with a delicate heart, with the fur, 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 Men call her the lass with the fur, 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 fur. I walked home on a summer's night When stars in heaven were shining bright Far away from the footlights glow Into the sweet and center Strange Of a coin called Cornish Town Born from afar on the gentle breeze Soft as the murmur of summer seas the Distant tones of an old world's dance Played by the gasworks, Ben, perchance, on the corner came full of hold. I thought I could hear the spurious tone of the cornet playing at a big transfer. Fiddle, cello, beauty. Far away, as in a trance, I heard the sound of the floral dance. Tiddly winks, old man, suck a lemon if you can. If you can't suck a lemon, suck an old tin can. My dingling, my ding. Oh, <laughs> Cease? You mean tacit? <laughs> I. <laughs> Follow the stick. <clears throat> I felt so lonely standing there, and I could only stand and swear, stir, sorry, sir, for I had no friend with me. Lonely I would have to be in that quaint old Cornish town. When suddenly hurrying down the lane, a figure I knew I saw quite plain. Twas Fanny from the fish shop. With outstretched arms I rushed along and carried her into that merry throng. Up and over, Fanny, show what you're made of. Halle. And I fiddled when dancing along. The pen, the spurious tone of the cornet, clamming at a big trombone, fiddle, cello. Sight the story of furry hum, each one making the most of his chance, all together before we're done. 
Dancing here, dancing there, jigging, jogging everywhere, up and down, around the town. Hurrah for the Cornish Time, ladies and gentlemen, to ask Mr. Ken Dodd to lead the company and yourselves in the last chorus for the night down at the old Bull and Bush. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ken Dodd, the entire company, Mr. Bernard Herman, and the entire orchestra! And this time, chiefly, your. 